Coming up on show 944, why are Tesla Model S and X delivery times growing? In some cases, up to four months away. Does it mean there's a refresh coming? Some people are convinced it does. We'll dig into that story today, plus all of your other EV news. Aptera is back with a new EV. It's got three wheels, and they say it never needs charging. Plus, it's made with Tesla bits. Also on the show today, Cadillac dealers are throwing in the towel rather than selling EVs, and a million plug-in cars are sold so far this year in in Europe. More great news for electric cars. Well, here is your EV News Daily for Monday 7th of December. My name is Martin Lee. We'll start with the news story that European regulators, the EU, want 30 million zero emissions cars on the road by the end of the decade. So you've got nine years to do it. Doesn't have to be EVs. Could be hydrogen, I suppose. Zero emissions. But it won't be, will it? Uh, so by 2030, this draft report seen by the news organisation Reuters says that the EU wants 30 million zero emissions cars on the road, can include trucks and buses as well. You know, a quarter of EU greenhouse gases are coming from the transport sector. So this won't clean up you know, the entire continent, but it is certainly going to be a, a big chunk of it coming from going zero emissions with vehicles. By the end of last year, there were 1.8 million EVs and plug-in hybrids, so cars and vehicles with a a plug socket registered in Europe, 1.8 million. They want 30 million on the road by the end of the decade. Now, the EU is proposing tighter CO2 emission standards for cars and vans. They're going to kick in from 2025. They're not fully defined yet, but this draft document says it could also include buses. Good, because if you're like me and you've cycled behind a stinky bus before, you get a face full of black diesel. It's disgusting. So let's get buses electric. And as I've previously reported on the podcast, the forthcoming Euro 7 emission standards, they are achievable with technology. More hybridization, more batteries, more electric, but it's going to increase costs for the automakers and it's going to maybe even increase the cost of the vehicles to the buyers. So it can be achieved, but the Euro 7 emissions regulations are going to be so stringent just go full EV. Just make electric cars, everyone. The German car lobby has already spat their dummy out. They've been calling instead for synthetic fuels. Oh, good, burning more stuff. And surprise, surprise, hydrogen. Yeah, no thanks. I don't really want to go to a filling station where somebody else dictates the price of something. That's the way we've had it for the last 100 years. I like filling up my car with something that I've generated from the roof of the house, or at least that I could do anyway. And every morning it's full when I get in it. I much prefer that. Okay, moving on. In a related story, one million plug-in cars have been sold so far this year in Western Europe. And, and the year's not even done yet. A million new plug-in vehicles, pure electrics and plug-in hybrids have entered service, been registered. That's about 10% of the European market. I know, big number, right? If you didn't realize things were so good here, 10% market share. And that's up to the end of November. So we've still got a month to go, see how December goes. Half of those were about, uh, about half of those were pure battery electric vehicles. So by the end of the year, we could be on for 600,000 pure electric cars uh, in 2020. Now, headline story today, Model S and Model X delivery timelines are increasing. And for some people, they're seeing them as long as 17 weeks. We're going to dive into the design studio now live and see what it says for me. I'd love you to compare and contrast as well. The design studio is showing, showing it could be a long wait for some people, hinting that a refresh is on the way, we think, possibly. It's been rumoured so many times. The Model S is basically the same as it was in 2012. Okay, interior different, front end a bit different. Chemistry-wise on the battery, vastly improved. Everything vastly improved under the skin. Lots of iterative improvements. But basically when you look at the car, and certainly when you get in a Model S or a Model X, starting to feel a little long in the tooth. Project Palladium is the secret code name that Tesla have given the new production lines for the updated versions of both vehicles. Now, here in Europe, so we're going to dive into the design studio now. We've seen some price increases recently, but also delivery timelines have been pushed back to March 2021. Uh, so let's have a look here. I'm not going to fire up my VPN, so we'll just do that by flicking from you know UK to US Tesla Design Studio. So starting with what I can see here in Europe. So we'll start with the Model S and the Model X here in Europe in the UK Design Studio. So long range plus, when you look at how long it's going to take, for all of these versions, by the way, kind of ignore Plaid uh, for now. But if I select long range plus, delivery is going to be estimated in March. Performance, estimated 
in March. And there's nothing that I can do to bring that down, even if I change you know, paint colors and wheels. And I leave it all on standard. Everything stays on March. Whether I tick different interiors, it's all staying on March. So that is, and it's the same for the X as well. So I've, I've tested this before we uh, went live today on the podcast. Let's have a look at the US. And I won't say, I won't fire up my VPN. So the website will know where I am, but it's as good as doing it if I, uh, if I do this in, uh, in the Tesla account. So we've got S first of all. And when I do this, I still see what you would expect to see for the S and the X. So that is two to four weeks last time I checked. So long range plus, uh, yeah, that looks all right. See, it says down here, two to four weeks estimated delivery. So some people, now three different EV blogs that I've read say 17 weeks. Performance edition, two to four weeks. Ignore plaid, obviously that still says late 21, just check, yes, down there, late 2021. And so long range plus, maybe if I could change a couple of the configure eighter options, the design studio options, no. It's still saying two to four weeks, different wheels, still two to four weeks. So I don't know where this has come from. Have you seen it? I'd love to know from you. Have you seen something that suggests otherwise? So I can't get it to say 17 weeks. Have you? Did you see that? Have Tesla realized it made the news over the weekend and have artificially put that in? I can't think that they would. Are these inventory cars? It's really strange because three blogs that I trust, and maybe just one person reported on this and they all copied, but I don't know. I, I trust them when they say that they saw 17 weeks in the design studio. So what do you think? Leave a comment below. Is it the refresh? It needs it. Should they bother? Look, I don't know. Personal opinion, Tesla sells, they, they lump the S and the X together. They produce around 15 to 17,000 every single quarter. Ignore COVID quarter because of course it's not representative, but it's around that number. And they're gonna make half a million cars this year, maybe a million cars next year out of all the factories producing threes and Ys. The S and the X are largely inconsequential now to the business. Now, emotionally, personally, I love both those cars. And of course they spell sexy, so you have to keep them. But I wonder whether Tesla would be better just letting them go rather than spending the money on refreshing them. Again, personal opinion, I'd love to see them refreshed another three or five years lifespan out of them because both are fabulous vehicles, but really do nothing for Tesla in the grand scheme of things. So what do you think? Have your say in the comments below. I'd like to know if I'm on the mark or if you disagree and we can have a, a conversation below about that. I'd love to see a refreshed S and X, but, but maybe a little more expensive but properly premium. Like when was the, I know a lot of Tesla fans will say that it's all the luxury you need, but when was the last time you did get in a really expensive BMW or uh, or Audi or even Jaguar? I have an iPace in the driveway uh, right now. I've got, an, I've got the new 2021 model year iPace for a month uh, to test. And it's a really nice car to be in. And sorry, Tesla fans, it's a much better put together car. Yes, there are knobs and buttons, shock horror, than an S or an X, again, personal preference. So, you know, I love, love that minimalist interior. It's a little too much for me in the three and the Y. And so I'd love to see Tesla just bring that design language together. So you've got the landscape screen. Again, it helps the supply chains and parts ordering if you can unify those parts across uh, the S, the three, the X and the Y, but also make the S and the X more premium and really compete at that top end, not only on the tech and the efficiency and the batteries and the motors, which Tesla already head and shoulders above everybody else on, but also that fit and finish. And that's where maybe they lose out sometimes. And that segues nicely into our next story because Polestar is a really, really well put together. Polestar 2, we're talking, and the judges of Norway's 2020 car of the year happen to agree. Now, no surprises that when Norway named their car of the year, they went with a battery electric car because some months, three quarters of all new cars are fully electric. Last month, just over 50%, down a little bit. But it's not the Model 3, which they voted. No, it's the Polestar 2, uh, the number one seller in Norway this year so far is not the Model 3. It's Audi's e-tron. Now, the judges of the award loved a little bit of Scandinavian DNA. And of course, although the car is built in China, it's got that kind of Scandi design running all the way through it. Technologically, the Polestar 2 is very nice as well, but it hasn't been problem free. It has had recalls of the 
those that have been sold. It's hardly setting the sales figures alight. It's inside the top 20. I think it's like 18th in Norway's sales charts. They've sold just under 2,000 of them this year in Norway. So Polestar 2 isn't selling mega numbers. I, I love it, adore it, design beautiful, but uh, it is a winner in Norway. Let's move on. I've teased this, the Aptera, and we can finally show you what it's like. Aptera is back. Now, they lost, or they, they left us in 2011. That's the last time you heard of the name Aptera. A three-wheeled electric car. Car. Back with a solar electric vehicle that they say never needs charging for most drivers. They say has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. Where is it in this? Like, it's a tiny, tiny vehicle. Where on earth have they stashed 100 kilowatt hours of batteries, which also is really, really heavy. And on a vehicle like this, weight is everything. So why is the pack so big? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. But they say a 1,000 miles of range, which I can well believe. I mean, it needs to be lighter, but also that solar roof array can give you 45 miles of range every single day. It's super slippery. I mean, it looks... Jetsons sci-fi, 0.13 drag coefficient, and just to compare them, Tesla's Model 3 drag coefficient of 0.23, Volkswagen's ID4 0.28, this thing 0.13, so it's slippery as heck, front wheel drive, they can get all wheel drive versions, but I say that, at the minute it's not in production, this is a prototype. It's not even a car, like I say, it's a motorcycle from what I've heard. So that doesn't qualify for the $7,500 federal tax uh, rebate that EVs do. And also, in the company released video that Aptera made and put out on YouTube, look at this, appears to be a Tesla plug and inlet being used. What's that all about? Now, has Tesla done a deal with Aptera? Because Aptera aren't gonna make a ton of these, so I'd be really surprised if Tesla went out of their way to do software changes, for Aptera to be the first company that they cooperated with but it could be. Of course, the supercharging network is the largest and very convenient DC fast charging network in the US. And so it would be amazing for Aptera. Instant access to thousands of destination chargers, superchargers, if they could work out the billing of it. Now look, Tesla over the years, and Elon has said that they would happily work with anyone if anyone else could come up to their standards and meet their benchmarks, which no one's ever done. Now there is an online Q&A with the Aptera team on December 9th, so we'll definitely be asking the questions, what's that plug doing there? But why would a company, which has only made an engineering prototype, get access to Tesla's secret source? Elon says there's no moats, but trust me, the supercharging network is a mega moat. It's a massive reason to own a Tesla. Why give access to Aptera? Or maybe they just built this prototype from an old Tesla that they, you know, an old Model S with a big battery pack, and that's how they've been charging it. But they wouldn't put it in the corporate video if they didn't want us to notice it. Hmm things to ask when we get a chance. Uh, next, let's talk about how the US could really supercharge, pardon the pun, EV adoption. Because the president-elect Biden has a plan to install half a million charging sockets by the end of the decade. This is a, a five-fold increase on what the US has at the moment. Now, this pledge was part of the, the, the platform, the campaign, but let's face it, nothing was audible in that campaign, apart from the sheer noise of everything. So we didn't even really know what both candidates were, were standing on, because it was a crazy campaign. But that was actually a core part of uh, of Biden's promise. And, and if he comes through with it, if he can get that through, and I guess, you know, I'm no expert on US politics. Clearly, I'm here in the UK thousands of miles away. If he can get that five billion of spending through, it will add so many charges to the US by the end of the decade. And experts say, experts at Bloomberg New Energy Finance have predicted that it will inspire 25 million people to go all electric in the US just because there's so many more places to charge. Right now, 90,000 public charging plugs at about just under 30,000 US stations, but one in five are Tesla and one in 10 are DC fast chargers. Look, policy. Oh man, policy at this level is so good because it provides guidance for investment, for car makers, for charging companies, utilities, associated sectors. So whether you agree or not with your politics of whether federal government should be putting money in, 5 billion US dollars into putting in charges across the country, the point of policy is it provides focus. And China have been doing this 
for a very long time and it's had amazing results. Here in the UK, something called the Competition and Mergers Authority are looking at whether fast charging EV chargers should be more regulated to help drivers deal with that range anxiety, they say, and worrying about charging. Now, I hate the phrase range anxiety because I don't have it in a petrol car, I don't have it in an EV. Just make sure you've got enough petrol or electricity to get where you're going. But for some reason with EVs, people use range anxiety as a, I don't know, kind of like a threat or a reason not to, to drive them. Personally, I think it's about confidence. And if I, if, I, there, if there is going to be a government study going into anything, I'd love it to be about reliability. There are 20,000 vehicle charge points up from around 1,500, 10 years ago. And personally, it's not about how many there are. Although, of course, we all love Tesla supercharging stations where there's 14, 16, 32 in some places, stalls that you can pull up to because you know there's going to be somewhere free. The worst thing is where there's one or two chargers and they're out of order and have been for ages and there's no reason to get them fixed. Now, from the UK government website, they say that they've launched a market study into EV charging across the UK considering how to make it competitive and get private investment in and also to ensure that people are using charge points and have the confidence to get the best out of it. So, if you want to take part, I'll pop a link down there. Uh, if you are interested in making a comment about that, you've got until the 5th of January. Moving on, some Cadillac dealers have decided to wave the white flag and throw in the towel. 150 Cadillac dealers are taking up GM's offer of some money to get out of the game. Uh, so what GM did is they said to the Cadillac dealers, you have to upgrade your facilities to sell EVs, or you can take a buyout offer, which range between half a million and a million dollars, and you can give up your franchise. Now, about 17% of Caddy dealers have said, all right, we aren't going to do it. We're throwing in the towel. We don't want to sell EVs. And that is their prerogative. The rest of them, though, are saying, all right, it's okay, bring it on. We'll make the investment. We'll make sure our dealerships are fit for purpose to sell EVs and not taking the buyout option. So these smaller dealerships that did take the buyout probably weren't selling a huge amount of cars and and the final numbers are still yet to be officially confirmed. But I think GM might see this as a as a good as a good investment if only 17% of their dealers, 150 of their dealers have taken them up on the offer of a of a payout to say, We'll shutter the doors, we're not going to sell Cadillacs, and actually the ones that are left are really engaged EV sellers. That's great news. So, another story, and the final story that we will end on today. I'd love to know your thoughts about this. A solar roadway in Georgia. Peachtree Corners has revealed their photovoltaic road system and there's a charger attached to it for evs at city hall the solar roadway is somewhere if you are in the area and you want to check it out at technology parkways autonomous vehicle test lane it's going to make 1.3 megawatt hours of electricity a year it's connected to a level two charger and a battery so you can still charge your ev at night if you rock up at city hall look it's a great idea in principle it's like these solar roadways or these roadways that evs attach to and charge as they're driving. All of these little projects are interesting innovation to think about, but really kind of pointless. We don't need to turn our roadways into glass solar panels. The ones, that in particularly in France, that were tried a few years ago have fallen into awful disrepair and haven't been maintained. They don't really work. Let's not make roads out of solar panels. And there's plenty of other places to put them. We also don't need to charge our EVs as we're driving down those roads. Charge them. The batteries are big enough and, and charging quick enough now that we don't need them. But an interesting technology. Or maybe you disagree with me. Now, I'd love to know. What's your favourite story today? Let's keep the conversation going below. Lots of EV news to enjoy. And if you like this, you might like the podcast version a little bit longer, a little bit more discussion in it. I keep this a bit shorter uh, for your YouTube Maybe you enjoy both. Uh, you can let me know in the comments below. Check out some previous videos. I think around here, hopefully. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, I didn't even say Siri. Have a lovely day. See you on the next one.